Hey, welcome to Face to Face. This morning we are joined uh, by Daniel and Marley and Shelly as we pick up this conversation around Advent, the first Sunday in Advent. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. We're going to look at a guy by the name of Zechariah. The theme for the day is uh, expecting the unexpected. And so we're going to just uh, dive right into this. I'm going to read from the uh, NRSV, Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of, how do you say that? Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you. And to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Expect the unexpected. So, as I was thinking about this, I, I was thinking about the time when we heard that we would have our first child. And when we got the news of the delivery date, uh, it was December 25th. And we're like, this is going to play well for sermons to come. I mean, two pastors, December 25th, this is good news. So, so that date was out in front of us. But the power of that day didn't stay with that day. It had its way of making its way all the days behind it. It reached back to the day that we were living and filled us with hope and expectancy of what is to come. So for the next, I don't know, was it eight months, uh, we were filled with this expected hope. Um, you know, you, you have these dreams and you have these visions of what, what this is going to be like. Um, the day hasn't arrived, and yet the day has already arrived and continues to arrive. And, you know, even during those few months, uh, I, I would notice things that I didn't notice before. I, I thought for a time that the whole world was being taken over by pregnant women. I mean, I, I saw them everywhere. Um, so it, it changed the way I, I, I look at what I listened for, what I noticed. Um, and so during that time, uh, you know, 
we, we live with this expected hope. And, and I know that each one of you has, has done that as well. Uh, so when you, when you think of Zechariah and you put it into that kind of framework, uh, when you think about living with expectancy, what, what do you guys think of? I would say I automatically go back also to my, to my, you know, pregnancy and finding all that out. That was, I mean, that's just a natural. Heck, they named a book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, which of course is a joke because nothing in that is predictable. Very little is predictable. But um, um, to me, expectant, the word expectancy um, brings with it some kind of knowledge, I think. You know, I, I feel like I know something. And when I expect something to happen the way that I have conjured it up, it means that I know something. Um, and in reading this passage and um, thinking about Advent, that is anything but uh, true. It's, we can't, we, if we're paying attention, we can't uh, have any knowledge of what's about to come with a Messiah, with um, what all of these people in this story, with what Zachariah and Elizabeth ex um, experienced. It requires a humility, I think, to, to um, not expect, um, how do I want to say that? Not project and expect what I think I know. Yeah, if that makes any sense. But mm -hmm. I think for me, even before we get to the expect, expectant hope, when Zachariah sees the angel and he's, af he's afraid and the angel says, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. God has heard your prayer. Um, and I think, do not be afraid. I, I could have that spoken to me every day over and over again. Because I think right now we're living in this time of fear and uncertainty. And um, But once Zechariah listened and heard what the angel Gabriel said, yes, he, he was surprised and shocked, which I think we all would be um, at his age and stage of life. But to me, it's that when we can release that fear and live into expectancy, that's when the that's when the the sense of hope comes to be and hope comes alive. Because um, I remember being very excited with when we found out we were we were first pregnant, um, and I'll be honest that uh, that baby didn't come to be, and that was a sad that was a very sad time to be. But we also knew there was hope that we could try again. And um, and with at the beginning of that, I was very fearful. I was afraid. I was afraid most of the time. Um, but I had doctors reassuring me everything was fine. Things will be good. Baby's healthy. And that started to help me live into that excitement and that expectant hope. So if we can, if somehow we can just release that fear, do not be afraid and let that go, um, which is not always easy. That's when I think the spirit of hope then comes alive and we can start living into that expectancy and hope of what's to come. I, I have, a, I have a, a different take on it. I'm a little bit... Um, Uh, I'm a little bit like Zachariah in terms of, of the idea of like, you know, you want something and, it, and it's so great and all of a sudden you get it. And, and I remember, remember being at the hospital and, uh, you know, we, uh, Isaiah was born and he was born a little early and um, pregnancy went, the labor went very quick and you're there for, I don't know how many days. And then you go home and you think, oh, you don't come with me to help because I, I have no clue what I'm doing. And I feel like that's a little bit <clears throat> like Zachariah, like, wait, how do I know this is actually going to happen? And then what? Um, I, that's how I, 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 that expectation is, you know, we kind of romanticize things in our, our expectation or, or we go the other, we, we just, we are in anxiety, like I, at least for me. So then all of a sudden you get to a point of getting the thing that you're wanting. And then you realize that your expectation is so limited um, like, you know, like Marley say, you're knowing, but you, you, you don't know what you don't know. And then you're, you're in the car, putting a car seat 
you know, for with a baby in it this time and going home and like, Oh, that's, that's a, that's a different game. And I think that's what Zachariah is doing. And then they punish him to be mute. I think that's a little unfair, but maybe that was exactly fair. That's what was needed. But uh, I think there's a balance. I think there's a balance of, of that idea of hoping for that thing and then understanding you don't know what that thing is really going to be. And, and that fear of, Oh, now I got it. Holy cow. What, what do you make of um, Zechariah being unable to speak? And, and really, uh, Joseph did not have a, uh, much to say either. Um, it, what do you make of that? I struggled with that. Mm. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't see it as punishment. I see it as more um, quieting Zachariah until that day comes. And then I can just imagine the pure joy in what was said um, when John was born. That's how I look at it. I don't know if that's theologically right or not, but I just... To me, it wasn't punishment. It's more of you are going to be so surprised, Zachar. I can hardly wait to see you and hear you um, when that day arrives. What do you think, Daniel? Well, I mean, you speak for our side of the human race. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the, the I mean, it, it is a punishment. The angel says as much, but I mean, but I, but I think, I think it is a, it is a, it is a, not punishment in the, I don't think it's like a, it's not like you're grounded type of punishment. It's more like a perspective shift. You get to stop talking for, for now and you get to be support. Your job is to be father and, and husband, regardless of your age, regardless of your situation. That is your job. Uh, Elizabeth is, is, is mother. You, you need to support her in that. So for, for me, I, I, I think it, it is more about the perspective of, of just the shift of, of, of how it happens in, in, a, in a birthing process. I mean, the, the father becomes, the, uh, I mean, hopefully uh, support for, for that, even through labor. And then you're right, Shelly, the idea of then all of a sudden he gets to say a lot of things once the child is born. I'm sure he says a lot of things, but um, I mean, would I be able to be quiet? Probably not. Um, if I had a choice, I mean, I mean, but obviously he doesn't, but I, I think for me, you know, his, his being mute is, is a, the idea of it is, is a, is a shift in perspective is, is a, the importance of this child should shift the perspective, not just of you as a couple, but of the world. Um, maybe, and not so much as Jesus, but, but ultimately pretty significantly. I also think, and I, this is just coming from the spiritual direction part, and Marley, you'll relate to this too, just being in silence um, can be very transformational on what you, and what you don't have to say, but instead what you, what you hear, what you hear of the holy um, that you wouldn't necessarily hear by needing to use your voice and hearing your voice all the time. And it does make me wonder about Zachariah, if he were a, um, a talker, a, um, you, you know, maybe the angel is just like, Zach, you, you, you got to take a moment. Just like Shelly said, this is an opportunity for you to learn some things. You know, he is a, he was a respected priest who, mm -hmm. who, you know, who was in a position of power and of authority and of voice. He probably was very used to sharing his voice um and and at this time it wasn't about him sharing his voice but experiencing being present fully present not with knowledge but with just his physical self and the lord and the spirit in him um this was his opportunity and this was maybe the only way it was going to come by the angels saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. enough there's got to be jokes out there too about 
uh, Elizabeth's joy when Zachariah was muted. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm thinking that she maybe conspired with the angel, like, could you do something about that? Because I got nine months of this thing and I'm a little old. And I'm like, <laughs> he gets really preachy. I mean, yeah, he gets, he gets real preachy. And could you just help me out? Yeah. Uh, when, when I was a pastor up at Calvary and Grand Forks, uh, we had the Sunday school program during the service. And the cast of characters were up front. And uh, Pastor Jenny uh, spontaneously decided to interview each character. And she got to Joseph and she said, now, Joseph, what, what do you think about all of this? And Joseph said, it was my understanding that this was a non-speaking part. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, with, with uh, Zechariah, uh, it takes time to be born again, mm. to be born anew. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes during Advent, uh, I've all, often struggled with people say, you know, Advent's a time of preparing, preparing, preparing. But to turn it around, to ask the question, how, what's God doing in your life? How, how is God preparing you for what lies ahead? Th that changes the conversation. Uh, wh what's God doing? Uh, how's God active? Um How's God preparing your heart and your mind and your spirit? Uh, where's God leading you? Uh, and so when I think about, you know, preparing or uh, expecting, uh, I like to turn that around to ask the question, what, how's God preparing you for what lies ahead? Because as we've talked, how, how can you prepare for this? Uh, how can you really expect the unexpected? Um, so let me ask you that question. How do you think God is preparing you for what lies ahead? Now, this is not the time to be Zachariah or John. Okay. Well, let's turn it around, but Marty, what, how is God preparing you? <laughs> Gives you a little bit more time, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Very good question. Yeah. Um, probably um, uh, preparing me to live with more patience, preparing me to live with a sense of expectancy instead of just going through the motions, um, in, inviting me perhaps uh, to think about, you know, the next 10 years of my life, you know, you, you you reach those milestones and I'm not going to say what milestone I'm getting close to. Uh, but, but what is the, what does the next 10 years look like? Um, so I, I think being prepared in that kind of way, um, what's God up to, what, what's God doing in this, this chapter of my life. I think God is preparing me to let go, to let go of um, some old things that just don't need to be there anymore. Um, to know that I can't control life's outcomes. I can only be present with people and love people, but I can't make things happen um, as much as I'd want to. And just to know, um, like the angel Gabriel said um, to Zachariah, your prayer has been heard. Don't be afraid. Um, I think God is preparing me in the way of, um, to, I think control also. Um, like Shelly said, just to, to let, prepare me to, to let life happen and to not um, think that I have all the answers or I have some special knowledge, even of my own life, that God doesn't have. Um, and um, 
Yeah. So maybe that humility, that piece I was talking about, you know, expectation means that I think I know what's going to happen and I don't know what's going to happen. And I got to let go of that. Mm. Well, lastly, and definitely most important, um, uh, I, I would say that I feel at, at this point in my life with, with you know, a uh, combination of work and family that uh, there's a push to be more intentional, um, to say yes to certain things that, that uh, I may not have said yes to before and say no to things that I need to say no to and be intentional in, in how I spend my time and what I give my my worry, my thoughts to my, my, my downtime too, because um, I, I think when you're, you know, when, when your kids are young, you know, it, it's kind of a hurry, 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 go, go, go. I can't wait till they're older. And all of a sudden now my oldest is 15 and a half and, and, and Lily will turn to turn 12. And, and I think I'm getting called to slow down a little bit and appreciate those moments and be intentional with what, with what we do. And I don't mean that just personally at home, but also, you know, in my day to day here, my day to day, not here. Um, yeah. And I think, I think sometimes God has a real good, has a real good job of slapping me in the face with that. Um, sometimes it's in the middle of in the middle of a sermon or sometimes it's in the middle of a prayer or sometimes it's in the, the quiet in between all those things. But um, I'm more, re I think my ears are a little more receptive to that. Um, hopefully my actions are too, but my ears are definitely, definitely there. I remember several years ago, um, sitting in my office and, uh, I think it was even before Thanksgiving and there was a house across the street. They had their Christmas lights up. And as a young pastor, I was like, you can't put up Christmas lights before Thanksgiving. That's not how this works. And I was just like, gee. Um, but I didn't know what was happening in that house. And they had some health problems with one of their children, serious health problems. Mm -hmm. And it was as if they were putting those lights up as a, as a sign of hope or a demonstration uh, against uh, what was happening and couldn't wait to get to that day of, of, of Christmas. Um, and, and quite honestly, I, uh, we might put up some Christmas stuff a little bit earlier this year um, because last year I, I, I preached in a barn with some chickens and some sheep and a couple cameras and it was cold. And um, you know, we did the best that we could during that COVID time but boy, did I miss people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that sense of expectancy in the next several weeks to think that we're going to do this this year uh, together. Um, and th that's creating already a sense of expectancy um, within us uh, and within our family. Uh, things that we've taken for granted. Um, but we're living more with this spirit of expectancy for the next several weeks and the culmination with, with the Christmas season. Does that resonate with any of you guys? Yeah, for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We already have our Christmas lights up and on. Do you? Yeah. yeah. We do. <laughs> yep. Ours are, ours are on our house. Sam and Greg got them up Sunday. Yeah. Ours are on. Okay. Here. We are definitely singing Christmas carols already. So. Oh yeah. I've been listening to Christmas music for sure. Yeah, yep. it's, it's, a, it's a great thing you said, Marty. It's just so true. Mm -hmm. Does it feel different for you guys this year as we look towards Christmas than years past? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. I think there's a shift. I mean, I think last year was, you know, you don't know what you've got until until it's gone. You know, that old cliche. And, and we had a lot of things that were were it's taken away that we weren't able to do it to the fullest. And so now we want to do it to the fullest and we want to enjoy those moments because we, we don't know what the next year will look like or the next two years or five years or 10 years or health situations or whatever, whatever might cause us the change. So to be able to have 
advent, <clears throat> excuse me, in Christmas. I, yeah, let's do it. I mean, Starbucks has already got their, their Christmas cups up. You know, we, we might as well, we might as well go to <laughs> live with a sense of expectancy. Um, anything else before Marley uh, closes us in a good prayer? No, Marley. Good and loving father. We thank you so much for this. Uh, time that we get to lift you up. Lord, we just ask that you um, pour your heart of expectancy on us, open our eyes and ears to hear what's happening around us and prepare our hearts um, and our minds to worship you and to expect your coming savior. Lord, when you ask us to prepare, um, that's it. You're not asking us to prepare like the, the, the turkey and the house and the things, even though that that's fun and that is, uh, fills our expectations. It's, it's you preparing us. It's our heart softening that we can um, be more ready for what you want to give us, again, through your Savior, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you um, for your generous mercy we love you and we praise you and all this is yours in jesus name amen amen Amen. blessed first sunday of advent Mm -hmm. thank you Bye. bye bye